I'm a working on the bigger living on the It's a true foundation. I'm a holding up the blood stain, burning it for my love. Well, I'll never get tired, tired, tired of working on the building. I'm a going up to heaven, oh, hell again, my reward, my reward. Well, hello, my fellow Americans and fellow Christians, and thank you for joining me for one more day of the Word of the Lord here in the United States of America. Peace be unto you, and peace be in the world. My fellow Americans, Senator J. William Fulbright made a speech on the arrogance of power in 1966. In his speech, he makes the case that America was succumbing to the arrogance of power. What he meant was is that America was suppressing any differences, eliminating free discussions which would shed light on old myths with new realities. Such is the church in the country today. The crying need speaks out loud, but the discussions are suppressed and voices are eliminated or silenced, as we all know today. President Obama was a particular proponent of suppressed free speech. He called it political correctness. But he is not the first to object. Churchmen have been silencing the voice of the Lord through Christian political correctness for years. My fellow Americans, America is a divided nation. The civil unrest today is not just simplistic protest. There are the added elements of violence and murder. These particulars are sometimes from a rage concerning the, control, the corrupt control of silencing unquestionable truth that would strengthen and illuminate a better society. This is not just happening in our society. It is also happening within the church, as I have pointed out. The evasiveness of truth and positive solutions has become a regular staple of American thought in our country today. We today, instead of reacting to truth, evade it by argument and discount its importance, distracting from the realization that progress is only achieved when acted upon. As in Clinton's case, the argument of moral betrayal is evaded and considered disingenuous because Everyone has shortcomings. Yet this is not the case in fact. It is the breaking of the law and the arrogance of power that is called into question. The inequalities of political power are considered the characteristics of Clinton and are questionable in the public's eye. The instability of decision making and the wisdom needed to command a nation is viewed as a disaffection and irresponsibility of Clinton. Bottom line is America today, the entire public, has been duped into believing low standards apply only to Clinton's complex matters. But the highest standards of the law apply to everyone else in this country. An evasiveness of the logical mind with a broad-mindedness that curses the nation. As we have said, power corrupts. And can all of this deception be translated into a tyranny with a democratic twist? We know the future world will be controlled by a tyrannical dictatorial government one day. And a Clinton presidency could be shades of it. And it is not far-fetched for our time. We, the American public, are being forced to tolerate moral, ethical, and lawless disorder of our leaders. Yet those in power are making it clear they will be intolerant of our protest and the call for decency and justice in our country. Is this the subtlety of a one-world government? Is this the future that we want for our country? The elimination of moral and spiritual order at the highest levels? Ruling with the law as an iron fist over the nation? And corrupting it for the use of power to persuade? And saying to the public they are not a voice or a consideration? A democratic, tyrannical, dictatorial government is a possibility 
in our time. There are shadows of it and it is evident. And we need to awaken to the fact that these things may be happening and are the designs of a Clinton presidency. Is this what we want as American citizens? An ideology that claims the arrogance of power using evasiveness of the law as a silencing of voices necessary for the ideals of freedom? There is much involved here concerning Clinton. This arrogance of power is symbolic of the Japanese attack upon Pearl Harbor, a surprise attack on an unsuspecting nation, completely unarmed and unable to fight back. Such are the high powers in control at the highest levels of government in our country today, evading justice, knowing the American public cannot fight back. A massive blow to the noble causes we all cherish. Clinton only fast paces the need to eliminate injustice in America. It is a quest for us all to have and for us all to fight for, bringing equality to all in this nation, from the highest office in the land to the everyday common citizen. The urgency is so strong that real peace can never exist in this nation until this ideal of social justice is the national staple of our confidence and a guiding light for us all. Now, folks, concerning Donald Trump, it is interesting that there are men of obscurity that have been men that have wound up being the leaders and guiders of a change in a nation. Perhaps John the Baptist is one we should consider, or Moses, for both were in the wilderness. There was Elisha and Amos who were working in the fields before they were called. We have to think about Paul as he was among the congregations. And think of all the disciples who were fishermen, servants, and even doubters. But they wound up leading and guiding one of the greatest faiths to ever bless the world. Folks, is it a possibility that Donald Trump is a messenger of our time to change the course of this nation? to guide it and direct it in the possibilities that are arrogantly being forced down our throat as not a possibility by an opposite side. There are the abilities of adventure. There still are the hopes and dreams that can be achieved. For if we cannot still hope and dream, then I would say yes, we are doomed. But we still can hope and dream. We still can see the future. We still look over the horizon. We still see peace as a possible solution throughout the entire world. We still see blessedness and prosperity as one of the greatest possibilities still available to us. We are not downcast. We still are standing strong. But we need someone to lead and guide us out of the corruption that is taking hold of this country from one end to the other in every facet and every form of those in power both moral and ethical in this country even religious we need to change the course of this nation and I want to leave you with the quote of Patrick Henry which he said the liberties of a people never were nor ever will be secure when the transactions of their rulers may be concealed from them. May God bless you, and may God bless the United States of America.